This is where the magic really happens, at least for me, being able to edit MIDI notes and CC data without so much mouse clicking and dragging and selecting and accidentally clicking and then unclicking and having to go back and we've all we've all been there so we're going to jump straight back into the cubase session from the previous episode and start talking about midi editing now a lot of this is going to use metagrid so i'm going to keep it open over here there's some commands that i use that i just have key commands for and i'll talk about those independently of each other um well let's see all right, first let me talk about edit windows. There are two ways to pull up general MIDI information in Cubase, not drum maps and things like that. For me, if I double click on something, it's gonna pull up the editor in the same screen as my main window. I will use this as often as I can, just because it's easier to be able to visually reconcile where I am in the score, especially with chord changes and markers and things like that vertically instead of having the separate window which is for me shift z pulls up a secondary window on my other monitor that's just the key editor window and this is actually a macro that i programmed key editor macro which all it does sometimes i wish that you could move these around a little bit, make the boxes a little bit bigger. So I programmed a macro that opens the key editor, zooms to full, and shows my use controllers. And what that means is it's gonna open the editor, zoom to full, meaning whatever the size of the particular part is in Cubase, and only show me down here the controllers that are being used. So if I do this and do the same command, Shift Z, it's a much wider view now. It's showing me the entire width of whatever the selection is, and it's showing me all of the used controllers. There's a mod controller there, you just can't see it. And I can also toggle the controller lanes if I don't want to see them. I'm using Metagrid, if you look to the right, the toggle show and hide controller lanes. Alt-L is the shortcut that I have built into it. And this is mostly under MIDI. These commands are going to be under MIDI. I also have a command. Sometimes I'll open it and there are no controller lanes showing, or it'll be really askew for some reason. One of them will be short and one of them will be tall and it'll look like this. So I programmed another key command, Shift C which just shows used controllers. Now that's the same command that was in my macro, but what it does is it reverts all the columns to the same height and only shows you used controllers. It's <laughs> so, so amazing. So um, those are the two views. Now, if I'm doing drums, a lot of times I just double click, and this is in the Cubase preferences, whether double clicking opens it up in the mini window or in the big window. I have it set to the mini window. If it's drums, I know that I'm only doing a couple of pitches, so I don't have to worry about scrolling up and down a lot for things. If I'm doing strings, for example, I'm going to use the big window because there's going to be multiple octaves of things that I want to be able to edit and see at the same time. And opening that here just isn't it isn't quite the same. Even if you turn the controller lens off, it's still a bit of a scroll. And by now you know how much I hate scrolling. <laughs> so if we were to look at the sustain. So I just did shift C to show the controllers. It's just mod wheel, volume, and expression. I have F13 set as my solo button, which is sort of one of the most used buttons in the world. Edit solo. That's under edit. Oh, hey, look, assign to. That shows you the menu directory and then the command within it. Great, we don't have to scroll anymore. So that's edit solo. And then I have control 13 deactivates all solos. So if I hit 
F13 it solos, and if I hit Control F13, it's going to get rid of any solos in the track. Basically, unsolo everything in the Cubase project. So for right now, we're just going to solo this brass well. Now here's another great thing about Metagrid. If I want to, let's say, do anything to any of these controllers, before I choose that, I do my question mark, which is locators to selection. Now the locators are up here, and they're here on both sides. So anything that I want to do with continuous controller data is going to be restricted within the range of this selection and in between these locators. And that's really important because sometimes you might want to do just CC data over here and not over here. So you can adjust the locators. They're basically your focus. Um, a lot of times, let's say this was strings and I wanted this exact same swell, but I wanted it to be under expression because the strings use this for vibrato and this is their dynamic. That's where this little pane of things that I programmed really comes in handy. So if I do CC1 to CC11, it's going to automatically pop it down there. CC11 to 2. Now look, it disappeared. Why is that? Well, that's because I don't have it shown. Shift C, and now we can see that it's on CC2. I can select any of the data that I want. And by selecting it, then I can scale it. So I could go from 0 to 100%. And this is from 0 to 100% for the duration of the locator. So if I want it to be 100% here, I do that. 0 to 100%. I probably went through that way too fast, and your eyes are zooming back and forth between the controller data and Metagrid. But it's just a matter of from 100 to 0, from 100 to 25, from 100 to 75, from 0 to 100. Super easy. It is editing the CC data for all three of these selected tracks. So I'm doing all three of them at the same time. Having that sort of power over multiple tracks is where you really, really save a lot of time. Another great example would be if I wanted to use this MIDI data, but not any of the controller data, I just hit this button and it's going to delete everything. Now you notice it only deleted the CC1. That's because that's what I had picked. So you can also filter it. If it were a 30 bar long phrase with all kinds of crazy data, you only wanted to get rid of one, you can select it. And then when you choose delete, it's only going to delete that specific one. If you don't have anything selected, I just clicked up here. So they're all deselected. Now when I choose delete, it deletes all of them. These are all, this is all controller one. This is all controller two. And the views work the same way. So if I just want to view 11, just want to view 7, there's no 2, just want to view 1, it's going to show it that way. So one way to do it is to just select one and then scale it that way. If I want to go back to the way we had it, I will pull this like that. So there's kind of the way it was set before. But you can also select it and then scale it. Copying and deleting kind of works the way it says, and the arrows are a percentage up or down. So I'm going down, and now I'm going back up. So really, these arrows are plus or minus 10%, and this says plus or minus 10%. This is just of the selected controller. This is of these specific controllers. So I added this so if I was doing some massaging of CC1 like I am now. I already have it selected and it's easy for me to say oh, a little bit more. Okay, I want it a bit taller and then move it down. That looks great. And again, yes, you can draw a line, but I'm doing this to three tracks at the same time. So having the power of controlling multiple tracks and not having to drag your mouse to make them work. Wow, I can't tell you what a difference that makes for me. We'll take a look at the drums. Same sort of thing here applies with the velocities. So it's going to edit the velocities to whatever sort of ramp I want or take them down and up. And for this, it's, uh, you know, seven or eight drum tracks all at the same time. 
And that's the one bummer that I didn't like when I first started Cubase is I was like, oh, it's got so many flexible scaling tools. This is amazing, but it's only doing it with one track. It's not doing it to all of the tracks. So if I go to another track, the velocities are the original ones. This way, using Metagrid, I can scale everything and move everything at the exact same time. Something else that I use a lot, let's just say uh, that button that I just hit, constrain delay compensation. All, all plugins introduce delay, uh, some more than others. So I have that set to F16 on my Apple keyboard. I can turn it on and off like that. If I'm ever doing drums, like I just did it automatically without even thinking about it, I turn that on so that I have... I'm going to leave the mic open so you can hear the keyboard clacking. Now let me turn it back off. See, there's like a, there's a delay there because of all the plugins. So I turn it off, that gives me slightly more, slightly more accurate timing. So if I were going to do something here, like that, Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a little early most of the time because of that little tiny bit of delay. So here's something that I do for drums and for short string parts a thousand times every single day. First of all, let me just isolate this so that we're just dealing with this one little lick since everything else has already been done. So a lot of times, if you hit quantize, if you're close enough, it's going to make it work. This is at 160 BPM, so there's a pretty good chance that, you know, if you're tracking MIDI drums on a keyboard at 160 BPM, some of those 16th notes are going to be off. Uh, I have Q set as my quantize command, and I have numbers set. I have to make this a little bigger so you can see. Just the numbers above the Q. One is a whole note, two is a half note, three makes it triplets on and off depending on what other factor you've chosen, so four is quarter notes. Five is eighth notes. If I hit three again, it goes eighth note triplets. So three toggles triplets, basically. And six is sixteenth notes. And this actually came from using Sibelius, too. I, to me, it makes more sense subdividing that way. From whole note to half note, triplet in the middle, four is quarter notes, five is eighth notes, six is sixteenth notes. I know five is eighth notes. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but in the scheme of things, if you're just looking at it from a perspective of whole notes on four to eighth notes on five and then sixteenth notes on six, to me that makes some sense. So we're going to stay on sixteenth notes. Uh, one of the first things I do is uh, within this region I choose select all, it's going to grab everything, and I use these two buttons right here to nudge, I'm going to go backwards, usually two taps does it, it's going to nudge it back close enough to where it's going to lock into the grid appropriately. And with strings and drums when you're doing these big combat things you, you can't get sloppy it's going to snowball and it's going to sound like a big mess at the end. At least this is how I like to work. So in the same way, it moves forward or backwards. So I'll get it to where I want it. I do option T, which is going to change everything to a fixed length of whatever the grill, grill? To a fixed length of whatever the grid is. Now it says Alt. Um, that's a Windows thing, and I apologize. Alt and Option are the same thing. I have a Mac keyboard, so in my head, it's still Option, but Option or Alt. So Alt T is going to make them whatever length. If I choose eighth notes, it's going to make them all eighth notes. If I'm in sixteenth notes, Alt T is going to make them sixteenth notes, and then I can hit Quantize. Now, for me, it's a lot easier seeing these notes the same length, especially when you start doing something like that, I can tell that they're lining up correctly and that everything's placed where it's supposed to be. And it would be really easy to spot something off like that. Even in this view, you can easily see what's going on as opposed to if everything were weird lengths, it, it gets a lot harder to see what's going on. This is the, the best viewpoint for me, and I do it all the time. I'll do a 15, 20 bar phrase, and it's really fast and efficient to keep everything clean. I'll do a quick real-time demonstration here. Let's get rid of this.
obviously early. Boom. Shift. Quantize. See? Boop. Easy. And super fast. Another command I love, yeah, that'll work here, is that one, which is a logical preset, but copying an octave higher or an octave lower. Again, the logical presets will be included on Patreon. Really, really, really goes a long way to helping, especially if you're doing you know, string things, you wanna just be able to default and do something an octave below or an octave above that plus or minus control option command for me really, really saves a lot of time. Now, if I switch my view on Metagrid over to MIDI notes, we've got some selections over here that help, like downbeats, if I go to quarter notes. So it's only gonna pick downbeats. Um, downbeats on two and four, downbeats one through four, just beat one, just beat three. Now, some of these, it's, I have to tweak them because it has to be, for me, I want it to be in the range. So you notice with one through four, it's grabbing everything, everything in the region and it's ignoring the range up here. If I choose one and three, same thing, two and four, same thing, beat one. Now it's, it's switched, it's only within the range and I want them all to be within the range. So that's a tweak that I need to make to the, the panel. Offbeat eighths, offbeat sixteenths. I mean, come on, you're dealing with a thing like this, being able to smooth those out, you know, combine that with being able to set different values and scale them accordingly. And I mean, it just really, really goes a long way and is super, super powerful. Also, I could take any of the velocities and just set them to whatever I want. Again, super nice, up or down or select certain velocities that's between 40 and 80, between 80 and 100, or anything less than 100, or greater than 100. Obviously less than 100 is broken, needs to be fixed, because it's only picking that. Let's just say there's a lot of moving parts and uh, a limited number of Cubase resources, so I keep shifting things a little bit, and I need to make sure that I can go in and double check everything. Little certain things like that that get broken, I need to spend a day and just go through and make sure that everything is acting correctly. Something else worth mentioning. We've got this VSP2 track here that does not have a name on it. That's just the default name of the instrument. Now, normally when I pull up something from a template that has a default name, when I end up using it, I give it whatever name the patch is. I can't emphasize enough how important this is. Make sure you always name your tracks a useful, so this is JGMAR Cinebase Athmo 2. So if I want to name this, I hold down the shift key while I hit enter on the name, it's going to watch this. It names this the same thing, which helps so much. So if you're zoomed into something and you're on the far side of the screen looking over here, you don't have to go all the way to the left to see what track you're on. And if it's just called VPS1, VPS2, VPS3, that just doesn't help me whatsoever. Just a little tip, but goes a long way. <laughs> I could talk forever about this stuff and keep talking and talking and showing more and more things. I'm gonna wrap it up for now, and if there are other specific things that you wanna learn about, shortcuts and key commands and things like that, I can easily do another episode. And even more importantly, if there are some things that you saw me doing and you've got some workarounds or some even better and more faster, better ways to do it, then please let me know in the comments below.